praise the Lord. You are in here tonight for a great visitation from the Lord. And the Lord will visit you and visit your family. And then he will do spectacular things in your life in Jesus' name. Keep on standing like that and we're going to pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name, Lord, because we know you are mightily present in our midst. Lord Jesus, our Savior and Lord, we thank you because you are here. We know you are here because you said, where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in their midst. And we know that your statement of promise will never fail. Therefore, Lord, we welcome you here tonight, and we pray you will do mighty things in our midst in Jesus' name. Spirit of the living God, we thank you because we know you are here, and we welcome you. And what you did in this gone by, you are going to do in our lives here tonight in Jesus' name. We thank you for all these brothers and sisters, men and women, boys and girls who are here. We are all here with great expectation. And we know that nobody will be disappointed. You will touch and reach out to everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can be seated. Tonight I bring a story to you from one of the events that took place in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came into this world. When he came into this world, many people came to him. And it's so very interesting to see the way they came and what they said when they came. What they did when they came, and what they received when they came. Notice what they said, what they did, what they received. And the assurance I have in my heart is, if we say what they said, if we do what they did, we will receive what they received. Because Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday and today and forever. And as you are looking at this story today, a great event, you will see what happened in that great event. And then you will see what you are to expect and what you are to receive. I'm looking at Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 46. To 52. And as I read the story, I want you to put yourself in the place of the man that we are reading about. And then you see what he said, you see what he did, you see what you received. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. And he came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho, with his disciples, a great number of people, and a great number of people, blind by Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. And when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus to steal, and commanded him to be called. And he called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he cast him away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Jesus says unto him, Go thy way, 
thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. That is the story. And that story has a great instruction for you and for me. It has a great example for you and for me what we are to follow. To start with, you'll find that the man is called blind. In many of the verses, you look at verse 46, it talks about blind but meals. And then as you go on, it still mentions him as blind, verse 49. And he called the blind man. And then in verse 51, the blind man said unto him. And then as you go on, it says, what do you want? That I might receive my sight. Why should I bring a story like this to you? You say you're looking at large crowd here. And the only few blind people. No, there are so many blind people. Because if you don't know your disease, you will not know how to get the cure. If you don't know that this is the problem, when the solution comes, you will look away from the solution because you didn't know that that was your problem. To start with, let me tell you, we're bringing the blind or the one that has cure for the blind. Because Jesus Christ has a special ministry. And it is a ministry of opening the eyes of the blind. When a blind man comes to the Lord, then you meet the one, the first solution that matches the problem. The solution he has is the opening of the eyes of the blind. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. You see the catalog, you see the list of what Jesus said he has come to do, what he has power to do, what he has authority to do, what he has been appointed to do. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. What is that meant? The Spirit of God, that's the Holy Ghost, that's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a creative personality. He creates, he heals, he delivers, he anoints, he empowers, and he gives strength to the weak. Actually, the Holy Spirit makes impossibilities possible. That's why everywhere Jesus went, impossibilities were possible. And tonight Jesus is here, and the Holy Ghost is here. Impossibilities in your life, they are possible tonight in Jesus' name. That's why everywhere Jesus went, mountains were rolled away, because the power of the Holy Ghost is greater than the power of any mountain mover in the world. And the mountains in your life, they'll be rolled away tonight. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The gospel is a good news. And tonight, I bring good news to you. That your sins will be forgiven. Your sicknesses will be healed. Your attacks and oppressions will be totally taken away. The gospel, glad tidings, good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there will be healing. 
Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there will be deliverance. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there will be liberty. And then it says, the recovering of sight to the blind. As one of the important ministries, one of the important statements of mission that Christ came to do in this world is the recovering of sight to the blind. Again, I'm asking you, are there so many blind people in the world? Many people will say no. And many people will say, for example, I walked through the street today. I did not meet a single blind man. And I dare tell you that you didn't look very well. And you didn't see very well because you saw a lot of blind people. And maybe as you're here tonight, you see, I look around. And all around me, I cannot see any blind person. I'm saying, you have not looked well because the blind are there every time. And thank God, I bring Christ to you tonight. And Christ will open the eyes of the blind. Now, when I say the eyes of the blind, that Christ will open those eyes, uh, let me show you from the words and the statement of Jesus himself in John chapter 9. John chapter 9, verse 39. Jesus, and Jesus said, For judgment and I am come into this world, that they which see not might see. For judgment have I come into this world, that they which are blind, which see not, might see. And that they which see are the made blind. That is, the people that say they see. And they see nothing. And yet they say, we can see. The Lord said, I have come. That the people that pretend to see, when they are not seen, they remain blind. And some of the Pharisees, which were with him, had these words, and said unto him, Are we blind also? These were people that were blind, and they did not know they were blind. And as you come to them, as we're talking about the story of blind Bartimaeus, they say, what am I doing with that story? Because I am not blind. Read another story to me that I can identify with. That's what the Pharisees were saying. The Pharisees were saying, if you're going to tell me a story that will catch my interest, if you're going to tell me a story that will give me a miracle, read another story for me. Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. If you will know and recognize and discover that you are blind, then your problem will be easily solved. But now ye say, We see. Therefore, your sin remaineth. The Lord was saying something. The people that have sin in their lives, and they do not know that the Savior is before them to forgive them, to take their sins away. They were blind, and they did not know. How many people today are blind to their good? They are blind. They do not understand. Here we are. And the Savior is close by your side. And you can't see him. And you're blind. Here we are. Forgiveness is very close. Stretch out your hand of faith. And you get forgiveness. And you don't know. And you're blind. Here. Peace of mind is so very near. And the Lord is saying, is the Prince of Peace. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful. Prince of Peace. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. Here we have the peace of God. Overflowing peace. Ready for us. Stretch out your hand of faith. And you are going to have peace. And we don't know. Are we not blind? Here we have the mountain mover. 
that every mountain of your life, every problem of your life, here is Christ, the one that does everything perfectly well. And he will take your mountain away. And he will totally destroy the works of the devil in your life. And you're still looking far away. You still want to go and do some other things so that your problems will be removed. Are we not blind? Yes. The people that are very close to their salvation, but they do not know they're very close to their salvation, instead of reaching out and getting that salvation, they're still looking another way. That's the blindness, we're told, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I'm reading verse 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. The God of this world, that's Satan, he blindfolds the people so that they will not see their good. They will not see the readiness and the availability of the gospel for them. And they do not see that salvation is available and salvation is free. They still think that there is something they have to do so that they will get salvation. Calvary has given us salvation. Christ has given us salvation. By the death of Christ on the cross of Calvary, we're saved. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And we still think, if we give money to the beggar, that will contribute to our getting saved. We still think, if we do some sacrifices and we offer animal sacrifices, we think, that's going to contribute to our being saved. We think, if I go to the mountain top, and then I wear a special kind of garment that shows how holy I am, we think that will contribute to our salvation. Are we not blind? And Jesus comes to open our blind eyes tonight. Your blind eyes will be opened in Jesus' name. And it is the God of this world that blindfolds the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine unto them. You see, there is spiritual blindness, and there is physical blindness of the two. The spiritual blindness is the most deadly, the most dangerous, and the most destructive. In Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18, having the understanding dark age, having the understanding dark age. Can you imagine somebody that says he has read the Bible from cover to cover? He has read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And then you ask him, who is Jesus? And he cannot answer. And he has read the whole Bible. You read Genesis, you didn't meet Jesus in Genesis. You read Exodus, you didn't meet Jesus in Exodus. You read the Psalms, you didn't see Jesus in the Psalms. You came to Matthew, you didn't see Jesus in Matthew. And you've gone all through to Revelation, you have not seen Jesus in Revelation. And we're not blind. You see, what the Lord is telling us is, we are blind. But thank God, even though we are blind, Jesus Christ has opened the eyes of many blind people, and tonight is your night. And the Lord will open your spiritual eyes and your physical eyes in Jesus' name. It says over here, they have their understanding that came. They are alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. Now, before I leave this uh, area of this, introducing to you, describing to you those who are blind, I'm reading Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. And we're looking at it from verse 18. Here, ye deaf, look ye blind, that ye may see. The Lord is calling upon every one of us tonight, 
and he says, you who are dead, hear. The dead will hear tonight. And you who are blind, see. The, the blind will see tonight. And then you are wondering who is blind. Look at verse 19. Who is blind but my servant? Who is blind but my servant? Who is blind but my servant? Or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect? And blind as the Lord's servant? Who is blind as he that is perfect? And you know, as you come here tonight, and you look at yourself, you say, well, I came to enjoy this crusade. Do you have any problem? Of course, I don't have any problem. I just came to enjoy the fellowship of the brethren. I am not sick. I am not ignorant. I am not poor. I am not homeless. I don't need anything at all. I just came to worship. Ah. Don't you see here who is blind as the perfect? That is, you think that you are perfect in health, you are perfect in life, you are perfect in religion, you are perfect in everything. I go to a good church, I read a very good Bible, a big Bible, I even preach to other people who is blind, I see that is perfect. And then it says, who is blind as the Lord's servant? See many things for other people, but thou observest not for thyself. There's an area of your life that the Lord wants to touch tonight. And don't ever say, I am all right. I thank God you are happy. I thank God you are all right in one sense. I thank God you love the Lord in one sense. I thank God you are worshiping the Lord in one sense, but don't ever say, I am all right. I don't need anything. You need something. I said you need something. And that thing you need, the Lord will give to you tonight in Jesus' name. Open the ears, but he heareth not. Now, now that you understand, the story I'm reading concerns you. The story I am reading to you tonight concerns everyone. Everyone has a part in the story that we're looking at tonight. I come back to Mark chapter 10. In Mark chapter 10, I summarize the whole scene under this topic, miracle of mercy for everyone. Miracle of mercy for everyone. Let me tell you, if it was a miracle of marriage, Many people will stand up and go back home because you don't have any marriage. If it's a miracle for those who are good, then many people should just rise up and go home because not everybody is good. If it's a miracle for the upright, a miracle for the people that don't have any flaw, any blemish, any problem in their lives, many people should rise up and go home. But it's a miracle of mercy. And the mercy of God is flowing everywhere. It will flow your direction. It will flow to your direction. And the mercy of God will flow to you right there. The miracle of God is like a river. And it's flowing everywhere. And everybody may come to the shore of that river and take all the mercy you want. And when you are taking your cup of water, I can come and take my cup of water. When I am taking mine, he can come and take. And she can come and take because it's like a river. The mercy of God flowing deep and flowing wide reaching everybody and everyone can come and tonight there is mercy for you and there is the miracle of mercy i read the story to you already and as i look at the story there are three things i see here number one calling on jesus calling on jesus number two coming to jesus he called then he came, three, kill from Jesus. The kill from Jesus. Number one, calling on Jesus. I read it from verse 46 again. Mark chapter 10. 
verse 46, And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind, but Amiel's the son of Amiel, sat by the wayside begging. The Lord Jesus Christ came to his town. And something good has come to your city. Miracle has come to your city. The Lord came to town. And then he was about going out. What's the implication of that? The implication of that is this was his last chance. If he didn't call Jesus at this time, if he didn't come to Jesus at this time, if he didn't receive the cure at this time, this was his last chance. That Jesus came to his town. That Jesus came to his city. And then Jesus was going out, and he happened to be by the wayside begging. You see, he called on the Lord, calling on Jesus. And as Jesus is passing by tonight, you will not miss your miracle. You will not miss the goodness of the Lord for you in Jesus' name. We're told he sat by the wayside begging. You see, many people, they are satisfied with where they are, who they are, and what they are doing. For this man, there was dissatisfaction, dissatisfaction. You see, in your life, if you are satisfied with the way you are, you will never make any change. You will never call for help. And when you are here, over here, at these days, as we are talking about Jesus, if you are satisfied the way you are, you will never call on the Lord. But the man was sitting by the wayside begging. And there was something in his life, dissatisfaction. Of course, some people were giving him some money. But he said, I can get more than this if I work myself. Dissatisfaction. If you are satisfied with yourself, maybe somebody says that, you tell lies? Yes, I do. But you know, I'm better than so and so. This other fellow tells lies every day and every week and deceives everybody. Mine, I tell my own lies in special occasions. Therefore, you are not you are satisfied. You are happy with yourself. Somebody says you have sickness. Oh yes, I have sickness. But look at the other fellow. He has a greater sickness. At least with my sickness, I can still jump about. I can still run about. You are satisfied. Any time you are satisfied with a problem, you will not seek solution. And then maybe somebody says your education is not enough. Ah, you see, I, can, I even can read. I can read the newspaper without putting upside down. I have people that read the newspaper and they put it upside down. It's only when they see the picture of a man and the head is downward, then they know they're making a mistake and then they turn it. And better than those people, if you're satisfied with where you are, with what you have got, you'll never think of making any change. But you see the man, he was dissatisfied. Number two, there were times he had been disappointed. He had been disappointed. He will stay on that roadside and beg and beg arms for the poor, arms for the poor, arms for the poor. And that day, he will not get anything at all. Sometimes on top, sometimes in the valley, sometimes rich and sometimes poor, sometimes happy and sometimes sad. And because of that disappointment, he said, this is my chance. Jesus is coming your way tonight. And this is your chance. And I don't want you to miss this chance because of the disappointments you have got in life. When you come to Jesus, there will be no disappointment anymore. Because of the dissatisfaction that you have. And when you come to Jesus, that dissatisfaction, everything will go away in Jesus' name. Because of the disgrace. You see, as uh, he was uh, passing, as they were passing by, you know, it says the son of Timaeus, his father. When his father was passing by, the father will not shake his son and say, "Good morning, my son. How are you today?" The father did not want to identify with him, 
The relatives were not there. They didn't want to identify with him because nobody wants to identify with a beggar on the street. And because of that disgrace, they said, this is my chance. I'm asking you, don't you see that area of your life? Don't you see that area in your family? Don't you see that area in your relationship? And it's a disgrace. It's an eyesore. It's something when you see, you want to cover it up. You want to wrap it up. You're not happy because of that degradation, because of that disgrace. That's why in this chance, as the man heard that Jesus was passing by, I said, this is my chance. And tonight, this is your chance. That this grace, the Lord will take it away in Jesus' name. Dissatisfaction, the Lord will take it away in Jesus' name. And the disappointment of your life, I rejoice with you tonight. All that disappointment, the Lord will wipe it away. Calling on Jesus, then we're told in verse 47, and when he heard, and when he heard, at the moment, at the time that he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. He began to call out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. This is a wise man. I pray you will be wise. I said, I pray you will be wise. This man knew that Jesus was not only a savior, Jesus was a doctor, Dr. Jesus. Everybody say, Dr. Jesus. Dr. Jesus. But this man, he knew something. He knew that the way Dr. Jesus treats you is different from the way the human doctor will, teach, will treat you. If you are going to a human doctor, you bring out money. If you are going to Dr. Jesus, it is not money, it is mercy. I said it is mercy. And so the man did not check up in his bag. All the coins he got, he did not count to say, now I want healing from Dr. Jesus. Well, the coins I have inside my pocket, inside my bag, will the coins be enough? You didn't have to worry about that. You see many people as you come today and we're saying that now Dr. Jesus will heal you. And Savior Jesus, he will save you. And Redeemer Jesus, he will deliver, he will redeem you. And Deliverer Jesus, he will deliver you. There are some people that are saying, oh, I'm sorry. If I knew that something like this will take place, I should have brought a great offering. Because they see that as you go to the doctor and you get the healing with money, they see that when you come to Jesus, you get the healing with money. With Jesus, it is not money, it is what? It is mercy. And so, because he said, he came to preach the gospel to the poor. Good news for the poor. Glad tidings for the poor. For the people that have nothing. If you only come, nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Could my tears forever flow, and my tears, my, my zeal, no longer know. All this for sin cannot atone. Thou and thou alone must save. That's the mercy of God. That's the love of God. And you have come tonight, you have nothing in your hand, the Lord will save you. And the Lord will heal you. And the Lord will deliver you. He cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. This man knew something. Mercy does not depend on what I have done or what I have not done. If you give me something because of what I have done, that's marriage. If you do something for me, I did well, I sowed, and then you give me back what I sowed, that's justice. But he didn't say, have justice on me. If it were to be justice, he didn't qualify for anything. 
If it were to be marriage, what marriage does a blind man have? And you are that blind man, because I read it to you in the Bible. The religious Pharisees, they were the blind men, but they didn't know. And all people who are not saved, who have not seen the glorious light of the gospel, were all blind. And it says, who is blind? Like my servant. Who is blind? Like the prophet. And we do not have anything to bring to the Lord. All we are asking for is the mercy of God. Have mercy on me. Verse 48. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. They said, you are crying too much. There are always people that will look at you and say, Oh, you are acting like that. Anytime we do what they are not doing. They don't see they are blind. We see we are blind. And then we're calling upon the Lord. And we're crying and shouting. And we're saying, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And they think they are normal. If we do anything different that they are not doing, they think we are abnormal. <clears throat> if they pray quietly, they think they are normal. If we pray aloud, they think we are abnormal. If we are very eager, and then when the Word of God is going on, we look at our lives. I have disappointments in life, and I also have disgrace in life, and I have dissatisfaction in life, and then I begin to cry, and my eyes are wet because I see my need. I see that I'm blind, and I need something from the Lord today. Then the people that are just looking and they're hearing, they say, why oh, I say crying? They think that we are abnormal because they make themselves the measurement of being normal. And anything that is different from them is abnormal. They saw this man was abnormal. Why are you shouting like that? So they told him, keep quiet. But then he cried the more. A great deal. Satan will not silence you. The messengers of Satan will not silence you. You see, as uh, you come over here, the Lord wants to do good in your life. He wants to turn you around. And He wants to bring something good, salvation, into your life. And as I give the altar call, and I say, this is the day you have been waiting for. That this grace will be taken away from your life. This satisfaction will be taken away from your life. Disappointment will be taken away from your life. And guilt, condemnation will be taken away from your life. As you are responding and you are raising up your hand or you are standing up and saying, Yes, I want mercy. Yet I want yes, I want forgiveness. Yes, I want the salvation of the Lord. It may be a person that is a church goer like yourself, going to the same church you are going, that will look at you and say, Put your hand down. Are you not a Christian? They are talking to pagans. They are talking to idol worshippers. They are talking to the people that don't go to any church. Are you not a Christian already? Are we not going to the same church? Why are you asking for forgiveness? Why do you want to give your life to the Lord? Are we not all right? They'll try to silence you. You see, you are blind and they are blind. But the difference is you recognize your blindness. They have not recognized their blindness. No messenger of Satan will hinder your blessing tonight. And so they told him, they said, keep quiet. But the more they told him to keep quiet, the more he shouted and called upon the Lord, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And it's wonderful. I said it's wonderful. Jesus can take note of you that, that place where you're standing. Jesus is noticing you there where you're sitting down. And then we're told in verse 49, And Jesus stood still. And commanded him to be called. And he called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. Tonight, as the Lord is bringing you to himself, you can then be of good comfort. <clears throat> I said you'll be of good comfort. Because the Lord is calling you. And the Lord was telling the man, Yes, I came to Jericho because of you. I passed through this particular road in Jericho. There were other roads he could have passed through, but he passed through that road because of this man. And we are here at this time. You may not understand, but we are here because of you. The Lord has seen your sorrow. 
the Lord has seen your problem. And the Lord has seen that you should not go beyond this ditch in your problem. You will be swallowed up with that problem. Therefore, it says, now, now is this program for you. And thank God you have come. Thank God you are responding. Thank God you see, this is your time. And this will be your time in Jesus' name. But you see, this man, he did something interesting. He did something illustrative. He did something instructive. Look at verse 50. And he cast him away. His garment rose and came to Jesus. I said he did something interesting. He did something illustrative of what you and I ought to do. He did something very instructive. He cast away his garbage. And I'm asking the question, why would a man like this, why would he cast away his garbage? Number one, you know he was a blind man. And he was sitting by the wayside begging. And somebody sitting on the dusty ground, he'll be ditching. And he was going to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And any time anybody was going to the king and anybody was going to the governor in any place, whether it is Joseph in the Old Testament or Daniel in the Old Testament or anyone going to Herod, what they will do is that they will change their garment. And I'm going to the king of kings and the lord of lords. These dirty garments, I cannot keep them on. He dropped them. He dropped it by the wayside. He, he casting away his garment, came to Jesus. Very interesting. Very illustrative. Illustrative. What was illustrative there? The garment he had was a badge of his blindness. The blind men in the land of Israel in those days, instead of having a torchlight, Instead of having a cane by which they walk, instead of having a dog by which will be leading them, they had a particular color of dress. And that color of dress was known with the blind men. Anytime you saw somebody going in front, you'll be careful so you don't tell them because that man is blind. Look at the color of dress he's wearing. It was a badge of their blindness. And therefore he said, I am going to Jesus. And when I go to Jesus, I will not be blind anymore. And therefore, I throw away the badge of blindness because I will not be blind again. You will not be blind again in Jesus' name. I said it is, number one, interesting. Number two, it is illustrative. What's the illustration there as we are coming to Christ? All the charms you have in your waist. Now, you were using that for protection, but Jesus Christ is the protector. As you are coming to Christ, I will not need the waistband anymore. You throw it away. All the charm you have in your finger for protection. I will not need that anymore. I am going to Jesus. You throw it away. All the bottles of water you have at home, if you want to sleep, you wash your face, you wash anywhere with the bottle of water. Holy water. I am going to Jesus. I don't need all those bottles anymore. You throw it away. All the talisman that you have, you order it from overseas. And then if you put it under your pillow, maybe you, you say you'll not have a bad dream. If you're going for anything so that the people will have favor upon you, you're keeping those things. But now, good news, you are coming to Jesus. I said good news, you are coming to Jesus. The illustration in what he did, casting away his garment, all the talisman and all those regalias, you throw them away because you don't need them anymore. Jesus is calling out for you from tonight in Jesus' name. And then all the other things have been taken because you are the covenant with uh, the occultic world. And because of that covenant, they say if there is any accident, then you'll just be taken and then you'll be saved. Of this or that, all the things you have, the regalia and the pieces of a, of, of a traditional things you have, look at the illustration here, you throw everything away because you are coming to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And it says when you come to him, he will give his angels charge over you that you will not dash your foot against a soul. Total protection will be for you. 
again I said, number one, there is an, it's an interesting case. Number two, it's illustrative. Number three, there's instruction. The instruction is, as we're coming to the Savior, all our peculiar sin, we confess them. Because if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The peculiar sin, maybe it is fornication that is peculiar to you as a sinner. That's your bad. That's the garment you wear. And everybody knows you. That that is your peculiar characteristic. As you are coming to Christ the Savior, you throw it away. You are coming to Christ tonight. I said you are coming to Christ tonight. Maybe stealing is your peculiar garment. Stealing is your peculiar characteristic. And as you are coming to the Lord, and we say, Jesus is calling you. The Master is calling you. Jesus, the Savior of the Lord, the one that will cleanse your sins away, is calling you. Ah, you say, I'm going to the Lord. I'm going to the Savior. This peculiar characteristic of mine, the stealing, or the lying, or the fornication, or the fraud, the 419, all the bad things that you have been doing now that you are coming to the Lord and Savior of your life, of your soul, you throw everything away. Come into Jesus. And you see what I told you? If you say what He said, and if you do what He did, then you will receive what He received. Tonight, you have a miracle. The miracle of salvation is based on the mercy of God. And the miracle of healing and deliverance is based on the mercy of God. Then he came to Jesus. Now, you see what he did? Look at this in verse 50. He, casting away his garment, rose, came to Jesus. You see, the way some other people want to do it, they want to reverse the other. They want to rise, come to Jesus, and many years after, throw away their garments. That's why you'll find there are some people that come to the crusade. And then we say, if you want to come to Jesus, raise up your hand. They come, they raise up their hands. I come to Jesus. I about the talisman at home. No, that will still take many other years. I about the stealing. That will still take many other years. I about the evil practice, the traditional medicine, the idolatry. That will still take many years. But you know, if you reverse the order, you do not have what this man has. You will not be able to receive what you receive. We'll do what you need. Number one, you cast away your identification mark as a sinner. And then you rise, you come to Jesus. That's what you are going to do tonight. I said that's what you are going to do tonight. If the charm is in your hand right there, you drop it right there where you are. You don't need it anymore. When Jesus comes to your life, you don't need charms anymore. You don't need traditional medicine anymore. You don't need idolatry anymore. You don't need any object of idol anymore. Because Christ will be all in all for you. He cast away everything and he came to Jesus. Now point number three. Kill from Jesus. The Lord will have mercy on you tonight. He will forgive your sin. And he will heal your sicknesses at the same time. Your blind eyes, it will open. Your deaf ears, it will open. Your paralyzed legs, it will strengthen. And then your backbone that has been injured, the Lord will heal you tonight in Jesus' name. Heal from Jesus. In verse 51, Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. It's not that we might receive our sight. It says, I don't know the mind of other blind people. I don't know the mind of other blind colleagues. Whatever is their mind, I leave that with them. Me, that I might receive my sight. If you make it personal tonight, it will come to you. You don't worry about what others do, what others say, what others want, what others accept, what others reject. Don't worry about them. Here you are in the presence of the Lord. 
And then the Lord is saying, here is a great chance, opportunity in your life. What do you want that I do unto you? It says that my eyes, that my eyes might be opened and I receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. How did Jesus know that he had faith? His action showed his faith. There is action of faith. He threw away his garment, the badge, the identification mark of blindness. That already showed that he had faith in the Lord. When I get to the Lord, I will not need that badge of blindness anymore. And now he threw that away, and then he came to Jesus. That's the faith. And when you kick away all the sins in your life, and you know, I am coming to Jesus, I will have happiness in Christ, joy in Christ, satisfaction in Christ, fulfillment in Christ. You don't need fornication anymore to be fulfilled or to be happy, or to be joyful, when you understand that and say, no more fornication, no more adultery, no more alcohol, and no more evil practice, and no more idolatry. Christ is sufficient for me. That's your faith. That's the action and the expression of your faith. And Jesus, seeing his faith, said, thy faith has made thee whole, and immediately. Everybody say immediately. Tonight, the joy of the Lord will come to you immediately. The salvation of the Lord will come to you immediately. And immediately he received the sight. He received the sight. He received the sight. What did he do after receiving the sight? Did he go back, say, Jesus, thank you very much. I've received my sight. And go back to pick his garment that he dropped on the way. No. What did he do? He followed Jesus in the way. He said, I've left my garment, I left it forever and ever. I will not go back to that sin anymore. I leave that fornication forever and ever. I'll not go back to it anymore. I leave the badge of sin behind me forever and ever. I will not go back to it anymore. He followed Jesus in the way. And today you are going to follow the Lord. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. That's what the man was saying. And though no one goes with me, yet I will follow, no turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, and my sins behind me, but Jesus before me, no turning back, no turning back. I've left the idolatry behind. I leave the tradition behind. I leave the magic behind. I leave the occultism behind. No turning back. No turning back. And as we say that tonight, the blessing of the Lord will come to you immediately. And the joy of salvation will come to you immediately. And your healing, your healing, your deliverance will come to you immediately in Jesus' name. Are you ready for your miracle now? Remember, you say what he said. Have mercy on me. You do what he did. You cast away that identification mark of the sinner. And then you receive your healing. You receive your salvation. You receive the grace of God in your life. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. We're going to pray together now. And as we pray together, great will be the manifestation of the grace of God in your life tonight, in Jesus' name. Let's close our eyes, eyes closed, and heads bowed, your heads bowed, and your eyes closed. Remember, this is for everyone. This is for you. This is for you. You are calling upon the Lord. Now. See how he called upon the Lord. The same Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Maybe you didn't know you were blind before, but now you know, now you know that you are blind. And the Lord is saying, He has mercy for you here today. Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive my sin. Take my sins away. I drop all those garments of sin. All the identification mark of sin. Lord, I drop. I drop the magic. I drop the occultism. 
I drop the fornication. I drop the idolatry. I drop the fraud. I drop all the evil things. I'm coming to you tonight, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. He's having mercy on you right now. He's having mercy on you right now. The mercy of the Lord is available to you right now. He's hearing your prayer. He knows the concern of your heart. He knows your seriousness. He knows that you mean what you say. He's looking at your heart. He's looking at your desire. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your response. That's bowed and eyes closed. If you are doing like this man, and you are saying, Lord, have mercy on me, and you are willingly, totally, completely dropping the identification mark of sin in your life, and you have pinpointed, identified that sin, and then you are saying, Oh Lord, have mercy on me and forgive me. I will not go back to those sins anymore. I come to Jesus. If you are coming to Jesus to forgive you, to cleanse you, and to give you salvation, raise up your hand wherever you are. God bless you. God bless you. This is wonderful. You raise up your hand. Thank you very much. On the side, and then in front, in the middle, at the back. If you're giving your life to Jesus Christ, you will raise up your hand. Thank you very much. God bless you. Now, as you raise up your hand, if you're sitting down, you will stand up. If you're standing up already, that's all right. And then, <clears throat> in a moment of time, mention those sins before the Lord. What is the peculiar sin that you remember now? Adultery, confess it to the Lord. Fornication, confess it to the Lord. Charms, idolatry, traditional medicine, confess it to the Lord. Holy water in a bottle, holy oil in a bottle that you are using to replace the blood of Jesus. Confess it to the Lord. Stealing, fraud, confess it to the Lord. And say, Lord, I will not do that anymore. I surrender, I yield myself to you. Confess to the Lord. Abandon them. Reject them. Like that man threw away that dirty garment, threw away that dirty habit. And tell the Lord, I come to you now. I receive. I receive. I receive your salvation now. In Jesus' name we pray. If you have done that sincerely, I'm going to pray with you now. Just keep up your hand. I'm praying for you. Keep up your hand. You want the forgiveness of the Lord? He will give you now. You want the salvation of the Lord? He will give you now. Almighty God, we come to you on behalf of these, my brothers and sisters, my sons and my daughters, my children. Lord, I am praying that this very moment, all the sins they are confessed, and even the ones they don't remember, and they're saying, Lord, we're sorry. Lord, I am sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive them in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, that dirty garment that symbolizes their sin, as they throw it away, they will not go back to it anymore in Jesus' name. By the precious blood you shed on the cross of Calvary, forgive them. Cleanse them. Change their lives. That from today, the salvation of the Lord will come to them in Jesus' name. I pray that the joy of salvation will come to them. And the victory of salvation will come to them in Jesus' name. They will not go back to that garment anymore to pick it up. Now, they will be following Jesus for the rest of their lives. We pray that this salvation, this forgiveness, will be stable and permanent. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, 
Amen. God bless every one of you. Our brothers, put your hands together for Jesus. We're ready for the prayer now. I said we're ready for the prayer now. Can we rise up? God bless you. The wonder of the Lord will touch you tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight, the moment you get to Jesus and the Lord asks you, what do you want me to do for you? And you must respond to that question. And that's the question you are answering now. What do you want Christ to do for you? If you are blind, that I might receive my sight. If you are lame, O oh Lord, that I may rise up and walk. If you have pain in your body, that Lord, you might touch my body and take this pain away. If you have cancer, Lord, that you might heal me and take this cancer away. What do you want me to do for you? Lord, that this tuberculosis, you might take it away. What do you want me to do for you? This HIV AIDS, oh Lord, touch me tonight and take it away. If you brought anybody having mental problem, insanity mad, Lord, that you will touch my brain and touch my mind and drive the evil spirit away. If evil powers are tormenting you and they are afflicting you, and then you have all those things afflicting your life, Lord, that all these demons will be cast out tonight. If you are barren, what do you want the Lord to do for you? Oh Lord, that you might give me miracle children tonight. Open your mouth and tell the Lord what you came for. The miracle you want, the miracle you desire, and the miracle you are telling the Lord, Oh Lord, this is what you do for me tonight. And the Lord is doing it now. The Lord is doing it now. The Lord is doing it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me a better amen. Miracle time has come for you. I said miracle time has come for you. You will have a testimony tonight. You will lay your hand in the place where you have the problem. Then you raise up the other hand. Lay your hand in the place where you have the problem. And then raise up the other hand. And the moment I mention the name of Jesus against your sickness, that sickness will vanish away. The Lord will heal you. The Lord will deliver you. And you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Raise up one hand and lay the other hand where you have a problem. Miracle time. I said miracle time. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come for miracles of mercy tonight. All these brothers and sisters, men and women, boys and girls, they have come tonight because they want miracles of mercy. I pray, Lord, you touch everyone now with your miracle power in Jesus' name. That tumor in your body, that ania in your body, and that swelling in your body, I command right now, come out in Jesus' name. The deafness there, the dumbness there, I command. That spirit of deafness, that spirit of dumbness, come out in Jesus' name. Those deaf ears be open in Jesus' name. The vocal cords not functioning, be released and loose and speak out in Jesus' name. The paralysis and the arthritis and the pain in your joints, and the weakness in your bone. I command right now, get out in Jesus' name. Those who are blind, the Lord has come to bring recovery of sight to the blind. And I command those blind eyes, be opened in Jesus' name. HIV is be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. And tuberculosis, be healed in Jesus' name. All the internal sicknesses in your kidney, or in your lungs, or the high blood pressure, any part of your body, I command those sicknesses, 
come out in Jesus' name. The spirit of epilepsy, you cannot remain there. By the word of authority and by the anointing of the spirit of God, epilepsy, go out in Jesus' name. Madness and insanity, you cannot remain there. The spirit of insanity and madness, I command you, go out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for everyone here tonight. Miracle everywhere. Miracle everywhere. Deliverance everywhere. Healing everywhere. And the joy of celebration for miracle everywhere in Jesus' name. All the miracles your people open their mouths to tell you that they need, give it unto them now. Give it unto them now. Give it unto them now. Every mountain of problem in your life be rolled away in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, this very moment confirm the miracle. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Check up yourself, the miracle is there already.